Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to some more Fire Emblem Warriors DLC, and this time, just like before, we're going to be looking at one of the characters from the original roster who had received a substantial buff from this new DLC pack. This is going to be Tiki. Tiki, who is a character that has actually featured in one of my most viewed Fire Emblem Warriors videos, and ironically, that was one of the only times I ever used her here on the channel. What's going to happen is we're going to be looking at Tiki and the things that are new in the DLC pack that she benefits from. So first and foremost, due to the fact that she has actually, for her main offenses, to have a combination of strength and magic in her attacks, instead, using the new stat flip ability, we can now divert that to defense and resistance, which are just slightly more. It's not that much of a damage boost, especially considering that offensive stats don't really mean that much in the grand scheme of things, it is still nice that she does get a bit of a boost. Also, we are going to be using Eot Shield and Lone Wolf, yeah, I know, huge turnarounds on how I used to think of Lone Wolf, I didn't think it was going to be that good, but it is, and I promise this will be the last time we will be having a build using particularly Lone Wolf. And Eot Shield, as we all know, most of the unique weapons in this game for the NPCs are Draco Slayers, which is well, we're talking about like Marth, Krom, Lucina, Lin. They all have anti-dragon and Eot Shields really does help for that one. Otherwise though, there's not really much else I can say about the skills. She has a very usable luck stat, so you can put luck um sorry, Luna, and if you want you can try substituting one of these other skills for a I don't know, right off the top of my head, you can try using Lethality if you were so inclined. But it is very much usable. Armored Blow is quite nice due to the fact that you can just muscle your way through most of the things, especially in Awakening mode. And the Awakening skill is also semi-mandatory on Tiki. I feel like every Tiki should have this just because it is extra damage. And it does combine itself with the Lone Wolf, so that's going to be very, very good. And of course, Trample, pretty predictable, like, just more damage on the foot soldiers, the most common types of enemies in the game. But the biggest difference, aside from her new outfit, is going to be her weapon. She finally gets a unique weapon. We don't need an amiibo for this one. It's going to be the Divine Stone. And the Divine Stone, what makes it so nice is the fact that because Tiki actually doesn't benefit too much from things like like the combo boosters or anything like that, you actually have quite a bit of things to work with. Obviously, a Rainstorm, we're going to be using that one since it is basically a staple attribute to have on all weapons, uh, especially because when you're in Awakening Gauge, just mashing regular attacks would be able to break most Sun Gauges anyway. We are going to be using Armor Strike because it has so much range when, it does it, when she uses her Yellow Gauge Sun uh, critical strikes, so that is going to be armor strike for everybody. Stat flip, as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to be using sword breaker. Feel free to pick whatever breaker, like bow breaker, tone breaker, stone breaker, any of those ones. Like, I'm just going to be using sword breaker since I feel those are the most common people to be fighting against. And plate slayer, due to the fact that this already comes with a Draco slayer, I might as well just fill out. A little bit more of that. And of course, critical focus is just really, really helpful overall. The really funny thing about this Divine Stone is that because it does so much damage, you could actually get away with doing an entire map with Tiki without even going into dragon form. It's actually really funny. You could do some pretty respectable amounts of damage. Like, her AoE isn't anything special. She will struggle a bit. You could just have the rest of your units go and clean up the map for you. But when it comes to fighting against captains, she actually does really well due to the fact that she exists on the outside of the combat triangle. So uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. You could do that. Actually, I think I might do that for quite a bit. Really, the way that it is, is that because Dragon Mode is actually quite slow now, it's not nearly as effective as it was. Not because it got worse, it's just that we've gotten more options in the past two DLC packs. The best way to go about using it, in my opinion, is just that if you see a long stretch of red, then that's when you would pop your dragon, dragon meter, and then that should be about it. Otherwise, though, her 1v1 against captains is actually pretty good, like this one over here. I could just get away with like doing combo 4, then follow it up with a combo 6 if I was so inclined. Also, I know that this particular one, for those of you guys that remember from my Tiki farming video, you could just go get this jar here. Now, I see this giant expanse of red all across the, um, sorry, let's point it to you guys right now, all from this corner all the way to this corner. I could just activate dragon and then just mow my way to the side, and then when I see that there's nothing left for me to do, that's when I can just uh, burn the rest of my meter. 
Okay, so unfortunately I wasn't able to catch that one. Actually, I think I can catch it. There we go. Has so much range, goodness. You could just get away with just spamming away regular attacks. Like, I used to try using the combo 5. I believe it was combo 5 that I used back in the day for these ones, but I just realized that just spamming auto attacks actually has a lot of range. And when you're doing this animation, you actually pause the depletion of your awakening gauge, so it's important to always be in a position to be doing this. He he fell out at the end of it, but uh, uh, let's catch up. Thanks thanks to critical focus, it's actually very easy. It's two hits on critical focus to get this. So here we go again. During this attack, I will be able to get my awakening gauge. Uh, you want know while we're at it, we might as well also get this captain here as well. Another sword master can do some serious damage because of my sword breaker. And might as well get this one too, hello. Like, I, I, she's about as brainless as it gets, but it's, I, I feel that despite the fact that you are just, you know, I, I, I literally just said that she seems brainless, but the thing is though, because you are working with a bit of a timer, and let's get ourselves some meter here, you are a bit of a timer, so you actually can sort of plot your, plot your little uh, conquest as you're running along. I mean, all I'm literally doing is just looking at the map right now, and then moving Tiki in the direction of the next big white circle. And that's what's going to be happening here. Again, because you're just spamming these regular attacks, because of how they made it, you can actually get a lot of range off. Okay, but unfortunately, the problem with Tiki, the real problem, is that even though her single target is actually exceptional, and her AoE is actually not that bad, if you can, like, facilitate having, like, the middle, like, having the captain in the middle of a large crowd, then you'd be able to do something. Uh, then, but thing is, though, her actual AoE isn't all that impressive. So, I actually made a mistake. If I hurried it up, I actually could have used that final Awakening Gauge burn to just go to town on this entire group and hit everyone. But since that didn't happen, we're just gonna go ahead and go for the next objective. Uh, you know what? Also, let's just burn this. Like, I don't think we're gonna have very much trouble with this one. Like, the thing about this particular mission, I want to go straight for the sages that are shooting lightning. The first one was on the bottom of the map, and the one is in the very opposite direction, at the top of the map. So I always like to start off fights with Tiki with a combo of four, three regular attacks and a strong, because that'll expose the awakening gauge. And, as luck would have it, this particular map has mana kits. And thing is though, since we have Draco Slayer innately in the Divine Stone, we're going to be doing some serious damage. Here we go. Uh, okay, I see a Tiki. Ooh, a Tiki. Nice. This could be fun. Oh no, okay, I was out of range for that one. Oh good, and they're all here. Okay, well, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to crowd them up so that I can use my warrior gauge on them. Here we go. I don't know if that'll be enough to get the dragon. No, it's a little bit short range, I'm afraid. Unless it reaches forward? Nah, not quite. If it shot forward, then that would have been a kill. Oh, and there's a Marth as well. Hello. Okay, we'll do it one more time. So this should be a kill on the Marth now that the armor strike has kicked in. One other thing I want to mention, it's been pointed out to me that if you use armored blows on a character that has the armor strike skill, they won't be able to um, have the armor strike effect on... Um, applied to them, as long as they're still attacking, since they can just stonewall everything. It's very, very useful, and that's exactly what we did here. And since Armored Blow is Tiki's innate skill, then, you know, it's just, it just bears mentioning. Okay, there was another mana kit here, I believe? Or is it Minerva? I know that Minerva's here. Oh, hello. Okay, so this is gonna be pretty nice. Again, just because we have the Divine Stone, and it comes with a Draco Slayer, Tiki can actually work very well outside of the context of being a dragon. And her combo 4 is quite good too, for AoE purposes. Like, oh, it's not amazing, but it's something you can definitely work with. And unfortunately, they have taken my fortress at the bottom row. That's okay. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run here. And I believe it actually hits around me, this particular warrior special. It hits around me, so I should be able to hit people that are from behind as well. Okay. And yeah, just one hit. <laughs> Goodness. Showing everyone why she's the strongest dragon. Okay, so there is the... So I see that there's still a lightning effect happening, so we know that the sage is still alive. None of the NPCs have been able to take out the sage, so we're gonna have to do that ourselves. Whoops. Okay, so I'm gonna do a combo four, and then try to break that with my regular attacks, or a combo five. 
Alright, so a combo fire wasn't necessary, that's good. And now we are going to work our way down. I thing is though, okay, so here's the problem with Tiki. Like she is amazing for single target, again, like I said before, but the problem with AoE, like most characters can actually attain 2000 KOs just by playing through the map as per usual because there will be like sort of splash damage. Tiki actually somehow doesn't have very much of that, even in dragon form. But since since we are making some pretty constant use of this we're making constant use of our warrior gauge. We should be able to accumulate quite a few. Okay, good. So yeah, we're doing all right, and thankfully, some like blessing in disguise, there was a fortress that was taken from us, so we can actually go back and then rack up some kills from there, and then work our way back up. Also, yeah, there is a recruiter and villager up there at the upper corner. I'm actually not too concerned about that one because. If I were to... Well, one thing about this particular challenge as well, if I were to finish that one, then shadows will appear and they will add more pressure to the map because they will be, like, they will have the red aura around them. The problem with that is the fact that if I'm still scrambling to get KOs, I run the risk of having my allied base being attacked. So sometimes it does help to sort of stall even something as urgent as Don't Let the Recruiter uh, recruit the villager. No, oh, okay, so it seems that the NPCs have already gotten someone? Okay, that's helpful. And we're just gonna go ahead and get this one. I think these are all the KOs we need. Yep, we just need 51 more. Whoop, dodge everything. Like, even if I got hit, if I was still attacking, then I wouldn't have to worry about armor strikes, so that's always nice. But yeah, like, the other combos for Tiki, her, I think her combo 6, like, in human form, I think combo 6 would probably be her only other good one. Like, because combo 5, the one where she does a hopscotch, it actually doesn't have that much AoE, doesn't really build that much warrior gauge. It's very small, and the only reason why I did any damage is because I have a 720 Divine Stone. So yeah, these are the shadows that I was talking about. Unfortunately, they're super scripted, so even if I were to pop Dragon Mode and then go to town on this Tiki with a, with a Draco Slayer Divine Stone, I still wouldn't be able to do that much damage. Because I think I think after a while it'll just stop. Actually, uh, how about we try that right now? Why not? Well, let, let's ha let's have a, uh, a a little experiment. Oh my goodness! Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh man, this could be bad. Oh man. Okay, we're just, I, I guess we're gonna out muscle her. She's gonna out muscle me, I think. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. Just interrupt it with this, and let's pray that this kills. That is a lot of damage that this shadow can do. You're not meant to fight these guys uh, directly. You're supposed to wait. Okay, awesome. And they drop a jar for me. That how kind of her. And there's going to be a Rowan. Oh, hello. Okay, so I can break this with regular combos. Actually, it could still work. Or a combo five. Or a combo six. Five strong. Five light attacks followed by a strong. All right, perfect. So yeah, and we have all the requirements that we need. That was very scary. I was thinking like, I don't think we can do that much damage. Even for all my defenses, that does quite a bit. Okay, so we're just gonna get rid of this fortress captain. And do you know what? Uh, for fun's sake, I will not use the um, dra dragon mode. I'm gonna go 1v1. Oh, no, help me. No, I'm just kidding, here we go. Yeah, because look, look, it juggles as well. It's very, very cool because you can do the combo 4 into a combo 6 indefinitely. So here we go again. Because of the way that this works, it will set them standing up again. So to kind of just like hit them with a combo 4 as soon as they fall to the ground, you can actually just do this repeatedly. So here we go again, another combo 4. Uh, maybe follow it up with a combo 6 this time. So it's flailing her arms around. Oh, cool. Didn't even need to do that. So yeah, like that's, that's the really funny thing about this new Tiki. She can actually go toe to toe with captains, no problem. It's just that you would have to be more reliant on the rest of your squad to actually get the KOs. But the thing is, though, since we've been playing this game for so long, most of our companions would actually be able to be self-serving, so they would be able to do that for us. So just a really funny way of playing, really kind of a solo Tiki, very different from how we usually do it. Most of the time, whenever I play Tiki, it would be like Dragon Mode 100% of the time, but it does feel a little bit sluggish, and I get a little bit anxious because I see how much my meter is always running out. But with this sort of playstyle, it's a little bit different, and it's it's quite nice, really. Now, for those of you guys that didn't catch it, this particular map was like a level 102 map for getting the Opus for Rowan's weapon. So, yeah, like these guys are pretty tanky, but Tiki's damage output for single targets is actually very good in or outside of Dragon Mode. 
and really, honestly, th this update is like the best thing to ever happen to her, as well as all the other characters that are featured in this DLC pack, but we'll, we'll get to them when we get to them, so I hope you guys look forward to that one. Uh, the only real criticism that I have is, I wish her wedding outfit had, like, it changed the way her dragon mode looks, but it looks exactly the same, unless there's like a difference, in which case I haven't really seen it. Which is unfortunate, but oh well, oh well. Can't, they can't all be winners. Anyways, guys, thanks very, very much for joining me, and as usual, I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.